rock and roll. Good evening, viewers. It's been a really long time since I did one of these update videos, and you may notice that something looks a little bit different. No, I didn't move to a dungeon. I'm still in the same room. However, the windows are not there because the whole layout has been moved to the other side of the room. Now, this was done for a multitude of reasons, mostly to give me more desk space, but also because the lighting is more even over here, which is better for filming, and I don't get that backlighting from the window. Anyway, that is the least of all of the stuff that I've been getting up to in the time since I last posted a video. So without further ado, I'm going to do a quick rundown of all my recent shenanigans. First, a quick overview of the new arrangement. So over there, those are the windows that the layout used to be in front of, and this is where it is now. So it's basically just been moved from one side of that wall to the other and rotated 90 degrees. Now you may notice that behind the layout, there is now just a blank white wall instead of those windows. And eventually there's gonna be a backdrop there. That was another reason why I moved the layout to this side of the room, because this means that well, I'm afraid you're just too darn loud, but also, <laughs> I can have a backdrop there now, which this layout, frankly, has been needing for some time. I've had a few people suggest it. It was too much trouble to try and do it in front of the windows, but now that I actually have a blank wall to work with, and now that we're buying at this house and it's no longer a rental, so I can stick stuff to the wall as much as I want, I'm gonna do an actual backdrop. So I'm thinking I might order a backdrop from trainjunkies.com. I've been looking at their website and emailing them about this. They have a couple that I like. I think I'll probably go with the Feather River Mountain backdrop, but I'm still working out the details. Anyway, that'll be a thing for a future video. For now, it's just a blank white wall. Over here is where my desk is now. I've added another section of desk right here, so that gives me a separate area for my computer and stuff, and that leaves all of this open for workbench space, and that for storage of stuff. Uh, this is my airbrush spray booth, which I keep planning to make a video on and have not gotten around to. I've been too busy using the thing. This is tremendously useful, and it'll, as long as I'm using water-based acrylic paints, it allows me to paint models indoors with the airbrush. It basically just moves air through it that way, filters out the paint particles, and spits the clean air out the back, just circulating it through the room. So as long as the paint I'm using is acrylic, so there's no actual solvents, just paint particles in the air, that does a really nice job of filtering them out. I'm cheating a little bit with the way I'm demonstrating this because this car was actually painted outdoors with a spray can, and I've yet to figure out a way to get that particular metallic red finish with water-based acrylics. I'm not sure it's possible, but it looked nice in there, so I thought I'd set it up there for the video. I did actually paint this in the spray booth, well, partially sticking out of the spray booth because it's too big, but that was done with water-based acrylics, amazingly, and I think it turned out pretty good, although the finish isn't perfect. This is actually an RC car. This is, I'll go over some of my other RC car projects, that's what I've been working on mostly in the past few weeks, but this body is held on with magnets. This is a custom painted hard body, it actually started out as a toy grade new bright body that I found at Value Village, and I have a friend who's really good at painting model cars, so we stripped the paint, filled, sanded it, smoothed out some of the rough patches, and then repainted it. The chassis is a modified Tamiya TT-02. This has been my pet project of late. This is a WPL, well, 1 16th scale, but actually closer to 1 to 13.5, uh, 1980 Toyota Hilux. Um, and my dad just got a 3D printer, so I've been hogging that a bit to 3D print some parts for it. I've designed and 3D printed this front bull bar, and this roll bar, and the uh, rear bumper is off of Thingiverse. Um, these are some new RC four-wheel drive rims that I just got for it. Those are going to be going on for now. I have 3D printed rims. These 3D printed ones are not holding up terribly well, so I am going to swap them out for those in the near future as soon as I get some good tires to fit them. I also just acquired this, which is also from WPL. This is a one-tenth scale Japanese K-Truck. I believe it's a Suzuki Carry, and even though I've only had it for a couple days, I've already done a ton of mods to it. Uh, it's carrying a bunch of paint cans in the back right now. You could ignore that but I've got Jin Erso in there driving it. Uh, she's actually slightly too small for scale, but it's such a small truck that it still looks all right. Um, I've painted the panel lines and the window trim and stuff, and I've modified the suspension a bit as well. That's gonna be another ongoing project. I haven't really been filming any of this because, well, I took a poll on YouTube recently, right, let me turn this off. I took a poll on YouTube recently and uh, zero people voted to see stuff on RC car projects. So I've just been doing this behind the scenes and greatly enjoying it. Frankly, it is really nice to have some hobby projects to work on where I don't have to worry about documenting everything that I do. But rest assured, the trains, and the helicopters for that matter, aren't going anywhere. I do need to make a video about that helicopter. It's a Blade 120S that I fit a custom scale fuselage onto. I actually have footage of it flying, I just need to go ahead and shoot the studio segment and post that video. So maybe I'll do that in January, maybe I'll do it yet in December, who knows. While we're on the subject of RC cars, I've been tinkering with my old Jeep crawler, which is kind of a hodgepodge of parts. 
and I've also been building this, currently my most ambitious project. This was another new bright Mustang body that I found at Value Village. I seem to have a knack for finding those. This is, well, they were advertised as one sixth scale, it's actually one seventh. And I'm not an enormous fan of the color, but unfortunately this is some kind of plastic. I think it's high density polyethylene that is pretty much unpaintable. I've tried every kind of paint I could get my hands on and nothing would stick to it. So it's staying yellow. I did Dremel out the grill and make a new black styrene grill just because I didn't like the yellow grill. But the rest of it is just going to be yellow. On the plus side, this is an extremely tough plastic, so it'll be really good as an RC basher. Now, obviously this is not a new bright chassis under here. If you lift the body off, you can see that this is actually a highly modified Traxxas Slash two-wheel drive. Um, this is actually the same Traxxas Slash that I've had for ages, or, well, sort of. It's a bit of a Traxxas Slash of Theseus at this point because there's hardly any original parts left in the thing. I had to narrow the, uh, the wheel width to fit that body. I narrowed it from 11 and a half down to exactly 10 inches. Uh, I did that by modifying these front arms. These are Traxxas uh, heavy-duty cold weather front arms that I cut down and drilled new holes in. And then for the rear, I used Traxxas Bandit rear arms, which are a lot narrower and tweak them a little bit to modify the toe angle. I had to use a drill for that and insert a new screw and do some stuff. Uh, for the body mounts, these are Proline extendable body mounts, which I heated up with a heat gun and bent back a little bit to line up with the angle of the rear window. Uh, same thing with the front. Oh, actually, speaking of angles, I uh, modified the front bulkhead, drilled some new holes and tilted it forward to reduce the angle there so the wheels don't move forward and back as much when the suspension goes up and down. The sway bar is from Hot Racing and it's supposed to be installed the other way around, but it doesn't fit the other way around with the narrowed stance, so I had to do it this way and make some custom links to go in there and those go to another hole that I drilled in the arms. This whole front suspension is kind of a absolute Frankenstein of parts at this point, but amazingly, despite the Rube Goldbergness of it all, it actually works pretty well. And then I also had to make the wheelbase longer, so I 3D printed this extension that goes in between the back of the chassis. This is a low center gravity Traxxas chassis and the transmission housing. And that adds 40 something millimeters. I forget the exact amount, but it adds a bit over an inch of length. And that is enough to make it perfectly fit that body. Took a lot of trial and error to get it to the point of that. Oh, I also put linear rate springs on here. I've yet to try those out in action. Uh, it's got a castle brushless motor in it. These are Traxxas rally wheels that I custom painted. I know the RC stuff isn't really relevant to this channel, but I thought you might just want to see what I was up to because frankly, I don't have that much train content to fill up this video. I do have some train content, however, chief among which is this. Now this will probably get its own video pretty soon. This is my Bachman Spectrum 440 and you may notice it looks a little bit different. I've actually swapped out the entire boiler shell and cab with one from a Great Northern Baldwin 440, uh, which uses the same chassis. This was another version of that Bachman model, but it's different from the Richmond boiler that was on it before. It's got the older style fluted domes, steel cab, uh, the little hood shield thing over the headlight. I think it looks a lot better. And more importantly, it's got the olive green boiler, which means then I don't have to go to all the painstaking trouble of trying to paint a steam engine boiler, which is a serious pain in the neck. Uh, the tender is actually originally off of number 12, which is on the display track, non-operational. Um, I just gave number 12 a random tender off an old switcher. It's not really nice enough to bother with on one of my running engines, but it's fine for a static display engine. And uh, while we're at it, let's go ahead and take this thing for a little spin around the layout. So this is kind of my favorite engine at this point. I renumbered it to 7. In its original incarnation, it was number 9, but it looks different enough now that I decided it should have a new number as well. And I finally have an engine, after all these years, that perfectly matches the era and general look of these passenger cars. I actually got these passenger cars for my 12th birthday, which means not only have I had them longer than anything else on this layout, but I've had them for over half of my entire lifetime. So these passenger cars have been through thick and thin with me. There was originally a fourth one. It's ended up being a parts car for these three. And I've pulled them with a multitude of engines over the years. On my last layout, I pulled them with that 10-wheeler, but it has now been upgraded to those green River Rossi coaches. These passenger cars will stay in service on the layout for the foreseeable future. I have no plans to get rid of them because honestly, they're still pretty nice even after all these years. So I'm gonna be pulling them with this uh, for now. It's a nice looking engine. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I did paint the roof black and add my customary striping so it didn't look exactly like a great Northern engine.
One other train thing that will probably be the next major train project video, besides this one, I bought this on eBay recently. This is an IHC 260. I know a lot of my viewers have experience with these. They are pretty nice little engines, sadly out of production now. Now, I had one of these when I was about six years old. It was the second HO engine I ever owned, and it's still one of my favorite engines that I've ever owned. It ran really smooth, looked really nice, and weirdly, even though I've bought several more of these over the years, I've yet to find one that runs as well as my original one did. I don't know if I imagined it or if it just was a fluke, but all the other ones I've bought have been pretty noisy. This one so far is not too bad. It still has a little bit of noise, but it is quieter and smoother than most of the other ones I've tried. So I think these are just kind of hit or miss as far as running quality goes, but I actually have a spare mechanism for these that runs even better that I acquired a while back. So what I'm gonna do, even though this is in pretty good shape, what I'm gonna do is take this and essentially kit bash it using all the best parts I can find to make the perfect IHC 260. I'm also gonna repaint it. Well, actually I might leave the paint scheme, but I'm gonna re-letter it and I'm gonna swap the tender out for a Vanderbilt tender from the Bachman Parts Department. Same tender as that, so it'll have something of a family resemblance, and it is, I think, gonna be a perfect fit for this. And since these are actually based on a Southern Pacific M4 class mogul, um, this tender, I don't think I'm gonna leave it Southern Pacific, but having a Vanderbilt tender behind a mogul is a very Southern Pacific look, so I think it's gonna look pretty good. All right, folks, well, with that, I'm gonna stop yammering and let you get back to the festivities. Whatever winter holiday you choose to celebrate, I hope you have a very pleasant one, and I will see you in the new year. Bye.